from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Breshith, the antidote to sin. We know that in this parsha, Adam and Eve, Adam and Chava, commit the ultimate sin. God says, you know, don't eat from that tree, and they do. And they're punished, and all the punishments are doled out. And then Adam called his wife Chava, because she's the mother of all. And then God made for his Adam and his wife garments, coats of or seems to mean skin, like a skin, like a leather coat, by Yalbi Shem, and he enclothed them, he clothed them with these garments. The question is, what? God just punished them, and now he's making them garments? Why is he making them garments? In fact, what kind of garments did he make? Leather? So the Ben Ezra, the Redak, say, leather? What did he, what did he, he took an animal, he slaughtered it? So they say, don't worry about it. As to how God makes leather, don't worry about that. Does he have to take an animal and, and destroy it? And not, God can make leather if he wants it. It's not a, it's not a problem. We can, today we can, we can clone it. We can make it in a Petri dish. You can make skin. It's not a problem. But what does it mean? What is it? Why would he make leather garments? So Rashi doesn't take it in a simple meaning. He says, there's got to be something to this. So he says, well, there's an Agadah. He says, Maybe it means that they used to have, like, today we have fingernails. So maybe they used to have one big fingernail covering the whole body. Like it's an exoskeleton, you know? They're covering our whole body like a turtle. As a certain creatures, um, you know, crustaceans, they, they, have, they have these crusts, these shells. And uh, that's what people had. Maybe we were more well protected, something like that. We have to ask ourselves a question. What does that mean? And we're about to lay out seven different interpretations of what was said about this. We have to understand why so many interpretations and what do they mean and how do you deal with when you have so many interpretations, what do they mean and how do you analyze it? So second interpretation is, uh, no, that it was something that came from, from skin. It came from skin, uh, like came from uh, the, the, uh, maybe from rabbits or different things like that. There are other interpretations. One is or. That the Midrash says it. No, it, in the Torah of Meir, it doesn't say he made them skins of skin. He made them skins of or, not or with an iron, but it, he changed the letter Aleph. Does that mean they had a different letter in the Torah? Probably not, but, but they understand that it means garments of light. That he enclosed us with a garment of light. After we had sinned, he gave us a garment of light. We need to understand this. Another interpretation is that he gave him special garments. Who gets special garments? The high priest has special garments. Why is he the high priest? Because he's the only person alive. He's the firstborn, and before the priests were born, Kohanim, the firstborn were in charge. So there's a whole midrash that Adam gave it to, uh, to, 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 to Noah, and Noah gave it to Nimrod, and Nimrod gave it to Abraham, and Abraham gave it to Isaac. Or that somehow Esau had stolen it from Nim Nimrod, and Finally, Jacob, through Rebecca's machination, she, he gets it. He gets this special garment. But again, what does this mean? Why? Now, he, now that he sinned, he gets the garment of a high priest? What's going on? Another interpretation is that, that uh, he took the snake, which had gotten them into this trouble. He skinned the snake. I don't know what happened to the snake. I don't know. This, uh, this, part, of the, uh, this part of the video is uh, very dangerous for those who, uh, who are animal lovers. But... Um, somehow he got rid of the skin of a snake and he give, gave him a snake skin garment. Snake skin? Why would he take the very animal that sinned and put it on him? Why would God want to give him something from a snake? Snake is a sinner. Snake is the evil inclination. And finally, they say, oh, there were different animals. Animals that were so beautiful, like birds. Birds are so beautiful. Whenever it's, one sees this colorful bird that you say, oh, you praise God. So they had garments that had pictures of birds. Or maybe there was an animal that was like a monkey. It was the same size as a person. He could stick the, just fit just perfectly. It was just the right size. And he put it on. So what are all these interpretations? What is going on here? And there's another one that says, Rashi says that there were two big creatures. But it says that God made the great Taninim, the big fish. So he says there was the Leviathan and his partner. 
Leviathan is a, some sort of creature. It's mentioned in Job. And a sea creature, sea monster. And uh, he had a partner. Talmud tells us that if, if, he, if, if he had let these creatures live, then the whole world, world would be destroyed. So he put them away for the righteous in the world to come. He put them sort of in the freezer till the world to come. And the world to come will we'll sit in the sukkah of the skin of the Leviathan. We'll eat the Leviathan, the behemoth, and we'll be in great shape. What does this mean? What does that really mean? So I'd like to take all these interpretations and divide them into two schools. One school says, you know what the antidote to sin is? You got to build the person up. You got to bring out the light in the human being. Every person should be walking around with an aura like, like Moses, like Adam, filled with the light of Torah wisdom, grandeur, the spirit of God, the, the greatness, the grandeur, the, the, the osher, the kavod, the honor of God. Or you want to build them up, you make them a Kohen Gadol. What is a Kohen Gadol? On the, on the high priest, on, on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, what did he have? He had rays of light coming out of him like, a, like the sun. Because the human being at his highest level is made of light or like a Kohen Gadol, a high priest. Or that he gave him these beautiful garments like some, some native tribes wear beautiful garments or beautiful feathers because these feathers express the grandeur and the beauty of life. You're so, such a beautiful person, he says. What are you sinning for? You're, so, you're as beautiful as the most beautiful bird, the most beautiful peacock. How could you sin? The second idea is no. Second school of Midrashim say no. Adam sinned. So you know what he did? He gave him the crust like a, like a turtle. He made him sort of like a, like a cockroach, like a, like a turtle. He sort of lowered him to the animal kingdom or he, he put him like a monkey suit on him as if to say, you act like a monkey, you be, you be a monkey. Or transformational interpretation that he didn't build him up, he didn't knock him down, he transformed the sinner to a righteous person. He said, look, Take the skin of the snake and transform yourself from the snake to sinner and transform and turn it around to be the garments of God. The garments that God gave you, you were given the evil inclination, turn it around, make it much better. So we have two or three interpretations as to how to deal with sin. Do we build up the person or do we knock him down or do we try to transform the evil to the good? And in fact, this Levi where does the Leviathan fit in? Leviathan shows the tremendous human potential. Because Leviathan, we said, is so powerful, you know, one sweat of the tail of the Leviathan, it could knock over, you know, the 20 cities, says the Gemara in Bob Basra. So Leviathan represents the power of the human being. And he says, you know what you are? You're like the Leviathan. You have that power. And at the end of days, we'll, we'll taste it. We'll, we'll eat the Leviathan. We'll, we'll conquer the Leviathan. We will be greater than the Leviathan. And when you eat something, you, 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 you destroy it, you conquer it, and we will show the great human potential. So you, what do you do when someone sins? One school of thought says, well, let's see how gorgeous the human being is, the human soul, how radiant it is, like a high priest, like one filled with light, like the, beautiful, the beauty of a bird. Second school of thought says, knock him down, show him that you're being too animalistic, you want to act like an animal, you'll, you'll look like an animal. Third is transform take the, the nachash, the snake, snake skin, and turn it around to something beautiful. And the final thing is the potential. God underscored after the sin of Adam and Eve, God underscored the potential of the human being to be like the powerful Leviathan, the behemoth. That can, with one fell swoop, could destroy the whole world. That's the potential of the human being. He says, you sinned. You went against God. With that, you'll only fall. Try to remember that you potentially are the one who eats the Leviathan, the one who beats the Leviathan, the one who's greater than the Leviathan. In the end of days, you have the potential to be greater than even the powerful Leviathan. So we saw, number one, different ways of reacting to sin. We also saw, what do you do with the plethora of Midrashim? We don't just quote them. We need to analyze, break them into different categories. With that, we can appreciate all the different approaches that the rabbis had to have the antidote to sin. Thanks very much for joining us here today at the Anche Sfar Beth Lameth Congregation here in Memphis, Tennessee. Join us each week for a discussion of the Parsha and the holidays. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asb.org.